Sleep training for your baby. When should you do it? And then when we did it. Right. <laughs> and how it also went for us. In today's video, that's exactly what we're going to be discussing. Let's talk about it. First day of sleep training, not a success. Kind of a failure. So our pediatrician and expert say that ideal time, the ideal time to start sleep training is between four and six months. Mm. We, on the other hand, <laughs> we on the other hand did not start We were there. very late. We started Jordan at 10 months. Yeah, we started at 10 months. And it wasn't because we simply just, no, we don't want to do it. Our baby isn't ready. Um, we actually had some challenges with Jordan, and it's so important to know that when your child is sick, you cannot sleep train. Yeah. Um, so when Jordan started daycare, he was at four months old. He was four months old when he started daycare. And as soon as he started daycare, your boy was sick like every month. Yeah. So, you know, we've had challenges with ear infections and things like that, upper respiratory infection and whatnot. And that would delay the process for us when it came to sleep training. Um, so we finally feel like Jordan is, at a point where, you know, he still gets sick occasionally, but not as much as he was in the beginning. Right. And we got the clear from his doctor to go ahead and start sleep training. Yeah. So it, with that said, do you want to pick up on how it went or do you want me to kind of go into it a little more? No, I mean, we, I can definitely go into how it okay. went. Um, but I also think we could have started a little bit earlier. But we also, I think we procrastinated a little bit as well. There was definitely some moments or definitely some, some months where he, was, he wasn't he was feeling the best. I he think was, about around month nine, we could have. The only issue we, yeah, we probably could have in month nine. He did get sick in month nine too, but we could have. But I think part of it was on us that we were also like, are we prepared for right. the challenge that is going to come with sleep training? Because yeah. our pediatrician had said, you know, be prepared to not sleep for like a week. Yeah. Um, or like from three for three days to at least a week. And I don't think we were mentally preparing ourselves for that. I was more ready, I think, than you were, though, for sure. I think you were more like, nah, like I, 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 I don't okay. want to, I don't want to hear him crying, like, I, and, and being more empathetic to him, you know, crying it out, basically, mm -hmm. which is what we're supposed to be doing is just like straight up. No contact. Hope. I mean, well, with, there are with, different methods, actually. There's yeah, different. Well, the there's different that methods. We wanted to do was right. to do the cry it out, and right. I think that that was a little bit of an issue for you, more so than it was for me. I wanted to do it, but also I didn't. I didn't think. I you didn't seem like you were a hundred percent on board with that. So at you're first. right. It's a twofold thing. I felt like I personally wasn't ready to hear him cry it out all night. I felt like. I was torturing him or something. I don't know, even though I know that I'm not. And it's teaching him how to learn how to self-soothe, which is a very important um, skill to be able to do. Like he has to learn how to settle himself. And so in the overall picture, I get it. But yes, in the moment, I was also like, OK, this is going to be awful hearing my child cry. And I know that I shouldn't step in because I'm only enabling him and not right. teaching him how to self-soothe. But on the other hand, I also feel like you weren't prepared either because I don't think you were prepared for the lack of sleep and all of that stuff that you were going to get. And so I feel like you would put it off, too, because there are times where Jordan would have nights where he's a little fussy and stuff like that. And you were so tired that you're, you know, you run in to find the pacifier or, or, or do whatever. And <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't seem as ready either. So I think it was a twofold thing. It was the both of us. And I think that they always, they usually say, and our pediatrician even <laughs> said it, a lot of the times it's the parents that are delaying, delaying the process than it is the it, kid. And it was. So it was. I think we definitely could have started earlier. We probably could have. Now there was, <laughs> there was. We, I think realistically we could have started around month nine. But with the challenges that he had between him getting sick a lot in the beginning, between that four and six months, <laughs> and also he had the issue with his diet, that we were faced with with the challenge and we could not do sleep training during that time. And she right. absolutely said like, 
no, you can't do it because we need to know that he's not crying because <laughs> Jeremy just walked into the room uh, on the door. And you shut the door, right? No, go ahead. It's fine. I thought you. we normally have the door shut. Go ahead. Shut the door. It's fine. Uh, well, she kind of pushed it back a little bit. And so, oh, the AC is going to push it back shut down. Three, two, and one. Yeah, so I think it was a twofold thing. Definitely, we delayed the process, but Jordan did have some challenges that for sure delayed him from doing it in between the ideal window. Right. Um, so that's when you should do it. It's recommended that you do it between four and six months. Um, and it's also just easier because we started at 10 months, and at that point, Jordan already knew how to stand up. Mm -hmm. He knew how to crawl. And so it made it much more difficult to sleep train him because he could easily just stand up uh, in his crib and be like, hey. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, hello. And, I, I know you hear me. That is true. And you're, you're right on that. Um, but I will say that really the only night that when we actually start, when we actually committed to sleep training and do the cry it out method. The first night was absolutely rough. Yeah, I was okay. going to say out of the seven, like they say the three to seven days, I will say that we're very fortunate. I feel like we only had one really bad night right. and that was the first night. So like we only had the bad first night and then by night two, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, he might have woke up maybe like once or something. But other mm -hmm. than that, um, night by night two, he actually like he actually really recognize like oh they're not coming to get me and like i need to self-soothe myself which was really pretty remarkable to be honest because I, I thought it was going to be you know a full week of him really trying to figure it out but by night two he was a lot better i would say 80 percent better than yeah. he was on night one and then after night two so for night three like he slept through the entire night yeah. and ever since then he has slept through the entire night so my my recommendation is to start sleep training as soon as you possibly can because yes it sucks the first couple of days probably is going to be but at the end of the day the sooner you start the sooner you can have a good night's rest without really having to worry so much about like him waking up throughout the night and getting him and and rocking him back to sleep and but doing also like all the mm -hmm. extra curricular things that you have to do in the middle of the night which we were doing for nine ten months but by not, by by when we started sleep training like this has been the most rest we have gotten since we've had our baby yeah and sure. also for sure like you definitely get your sleep and you get your nights back but it's also so important for the baby as well like when they say sleep training they're not just signing so like parents you can get some sleep but it's also very important for the baby's development that's when they grow the most when exactly. they're sleeping exactly um and it's it's important for brain development and things like that so um you really do want to make sure your child is getting ample enough sleep and of course like in the newborn stage they're sleeping uh, an ex extended amount of time but as they get older their wake windows are are um longer and their periods of rest at night should be ideally around like that 12 hours. They should be getting like 12 hours of sleep so that they're um, developing. And that's that's how they grow. And, you know, everything from their head to their, you know, their legs, arms, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a win win for both the parents and for the baby because right. it's super important for the baby's growth and development. Mm -hmm. But as parents, you also kind of get your night back, you get rest. And then that way you both can show up and be the parent you want to be for your child because you feel like you're well rested. You've gotten ample enough right. sleep and there's going to be trial and error with that. There may be some nights where your child probably regresses a little bit and you may have to deviate from the plan a little bit. But um, the biggest thing when it does come to sleep training, because there are multiple methods, we did the cry it out method, um, but there's like the Ferber method and, um, a bunch of other methods as well that we could provide if you if you really want to know. But whichever method you stick with, you have to be consistent. Right. That's the biggest thing. And yes, it was it was something that I thought was going to be a challenge. And I didn't like hearing him cry and stuff like that. But you just couldn't intervene. And of course, you know, we're watching him on the camera to make sure he's safe and everything. You mm -hmm. definitely still want to make sure that whatever decision you make, you still haven't like um safe sleeping methods and procedures and stuff like that in place. You don't just shut the door and walk away and then forget about them. You still need to make sure you're watching them and keep an eye on them and stuff like that. 
but you just be consistent with whatever you do. And kids are so smart. Like they will pick up and they will learn. And he learned how to self-soothe. And it's been so peaceful for the both of us because it's good knowing that he's getting the sleep that he needs right. for his development and growth. And we can get some good rest too and wake yeah. up feeling refreshed and being able to take on the day to show up to be great parents and everything else in between. Exactly. So to recap, this is this is our story. We started at month 10. Mm-hmm. What you should be doing is starting between four and six months. Yes. And as far as how it went for us, it went pretty smooth. I mean, the first night was rough. Second night was a lot better. Mm-hmm. Third night, fully sleep. Every night has been peaceful ever since uh, since n- uh, night two. Yeah. So I say go ahead and get started with it as soon as you possibly can. Wish you good luck in whatever stage you are in and this journey. And if you're just starting sleep training, hang in there. It does get better. The first few nights will be rough, but just hang in there. Just be consistent. And your child is going to thank you and you're going to thank yourself in the long run. Amen to that. So my name is Shane. I'm Jen. And this is the Yam Board. Bye, everyone. And remember to find joy in the journey. Building a happy home, building a happy marriage, building a happy family. All of those things take day in and day out work. Like you said, it's about those routines, it's about those habits. And building those healthy habits provides you the responsibility for you to pour into your marriage, to pour into your relationship, and to pour into yourself. 